Ephesians chapter 6, Apostle Paul begins to teach the church about fighting the enemy. And he begins to give them key ways and elements to fighting the enemy. And he says this in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. He says, in addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, many of you, if you've been in the church at all, you've heard this, which is the word of God. And we've used that as, as the Bible. How many of you have ever heard that, right? The word of God fights the enemy. And that is true. But when it comes to this passage, Paul doesn't use the, the regular term that we're used to. You see, there's two ways to interpret it in the Greek when it comes to the word of God. One of those phrases is logos. And logos means the entire written word of God. In fact, there's a Bible software called logos for pastors out there. And so if I said, hand me my logos, that would be this. But Paul does not use that word. He doesn't say, take up your logos and fight the enemy. He uses a specific word. He uses the word rhema. And rhema means a quickened and specific word from the spirit a quickened and specific word from the Spirit. Now, when he says this, we go, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But see, historically, these people would have known exactly what he's talking about, this, these, these people that he was writing this to and speaking to, because they would have had Roman soldiers around them all the time, and they would have seen them, and they would have been dressed, and they would have been carrying large swords, and they would be practicing with those swords twice a day, and they were double the weight of the sword that they used in battle. It was to build endurance and strength. Catch me on this. They would carry the sword twice a day they would practice to, to build endurance and strength but when it came to the battle the sword was not a large gladiator sword it was the sword it was the size of a dagger and so historically they would carry a sword the size of a dagger and they were taught this never cut and slash it will wear you out in fact, you're called to use as, they, they would say this, you're supposed to use as little effort as possible so you will have enough strength for the battle at hand. And so they were taught, theologians will tell you that they believe the sword only had to go in two inches to kill. They were taught to understand their enemy in such a way that they had to use as little effort as possible, stab it two inches, kill him, and keep going. In fact, they were said, never, never waste your energy battling. Deal with them and keep going. And see, I, I just want to bring this into a spiritual way. You see, I see too many people who are biblically illiterate, don't know the word, are, are trying to find something to find the enemy. And the truth is, if you don't know the word and have the word in your life and build endurance and strength and build your pantry, when the enemy comes, you're not going to know what to do. And you're going to run up to your pastor and say, Pastor, give me a word. Come on. You're going to come up to the altar call and say, somebody pray this off of me. And what God wants to do is he wants, you're not his grandkids. You're his kids. Yeah. Grandparents ruin children. I don't know if you have any. Our, my, grand, my parents are ruining my children. But when you're parents, you go, see, I'm not just going to solve your problem. I'm going to teach you how to solve it for the rest of your life. Yeah. And this is what Jesus do, does in Luke chapter 4. The devil comes to hurt, to hurt Jesus. And Jesus has been, he has not done ministry yet. 30 years of preparation, three years of ministry, he gets baptized, goes into the desert, has not eaten for 40 days. How many of you have ever not eaten food for 40 days? This is your moment to brag. Just wait. Okay. How many of you have ever done it for a week? A week of juice fasting. Okay. Okay. A few of us. How many of you missed dinner and can barely concentrate right now? Okay. Okay. Awesome. So Jesus goes into the desert and the enemy goes, hey, See those rocks right there? Turn them into bread. And Jesus does something very key. Jesus doesn't say, okay, enemy, you know what happened in Luke chapter 3. Like, I went into the desert. My cousin baptized me. It was open heaven. My father shouted out. I got a massive prophetic word. The spirit landed on me. I mean, it was amazing. No, he doesn't fight the enemy by his prophetic words, his encounters, or how loved he is. This is key. This is so key because I see too many people trying to worship their way out of warfare, and I love it. Yes, worship. Yes, declare. But get your rhema word and begin to actually deal with the enemy because you don't think the enemy knows how loved you are? He hates how loved you are. You are the most precious possession on the face of the earth. If you even had a taste of how powerful you are, you would never wonder again how loved and accepted you are. You would never wonder. 
The enemy knows exactly who you are, and he's not, he's not surprised by that. But he's saying, Jesus does not do something that we can't all do. He always gave us strategies to teach us how to live, not just in the biblical day, but today in 2018. He's teaching us strategy, and he's saying, here's what you're going to do. When the enemy comes, you're going to say this, it is written. It is written. And he says, man does not live by bread alone. And then the, the enemy comes back at him and he begins to say, he quotes scripture to him, which is what I see a lot of Christians experience is that the enemy will quote scripture to us to actually keep us in bondage because we don't know the word. We use our favorite Bible verse to fight every battle we've had for the last 15 flipping years. <laughs> And we don't have anything to fight the enemy. I love you, but the, the sign that you got at Hobby Lobby is not your rhema word. It's a great word. It's a great word, but it's not going to fight. You're going to have to know. You're going to have to know it is. And Jesus gives us strategy.